Times for Business, where we are one week away from the start of the NFL season. Now, if that is an acquired taste which you have yet to acquire, this could be exactly the right time because we're joined today by Michael McQuaid, who is the co-founder of the Irish NFL Show and perhaps the man most in know about the sport here on the island of Ireland. You're very welcome to Sport for Business, Michael. Rob, thanks a million for having me on, and I appreciate that reference. I wouldn't say I'm the, the man most in know, but hopefully in time I will be. Who knows? It is a great show. Um, I'm a big fan of the sport. You can see over my left-hand shoulder that I've uh, brought down my New England Patriots uh, pigskin uh, to get me in the mood for the new season with Mac Jones, hopefully, in the, uh, in the quarterback seat. We'll see how that works out. But the, the sport in Ireland... Where is it at the moment? Because it seems to be that there are a, a group of us who are really interested in it and passionate about it. There is a slightly wider group that has got some interest in it. But where exactly do does it stand in the pantheon of Irish sporting interests? I think that's a really good point, you know, to actually consider. It's, it's a very fast growing sport and not just in Ireland, but I guess for Ireland and the UK. And the thing that we want to try and focus on in the Irish NFL show is, is to look at the island of Ireland as a whole and see where that growth is. And I don't have the figure to show the growth of the game over the last maybe 18 to 24 months, but it, it is developing high growth. In terms of being played on an amateur level in Ireland, it's, I think it's the fastest growing sport in Ireland for that there. But in terms of interest in the NFL, what we find in terms of our social engagement, the growth over the last eight to 12 months alone has been has been unbelievable. And I mean, it's, it, look, it's, it's not going to get to the heights of people going to watch it in Croke Park every week, like the GEA, for example. But I, I really think it could be as popular as it is in London, in the sense of maybe having a couple of games a year in Dublin, hypothetically, someday. But I think that, that there is that much interest there, both in a... Uh, I guess, a sense where somebody watches it every Sunday or somebody maybe comes into it maybe on a late night in October or November by the fire. And I think that's the beauty of it. And we're, sometimes people look at the time difference negatively, but I think that's what's so good about it for us in Ireland. I think, yeah, I think US sport, and um, we'll see that with the Ryder Cup as well. It just plays into our prime time. So I think it's, uh, I, th- I think it's, it's made for an Irish TV audience. Um, we, we do, of course, we've got the College Football Classic, which this time next year will be basking in the glow of, uh, of, of the first game in what will hopefully, once again, post COVID, be a five year um, series. But do you genuinely think that we might be in, in, in a position to actually get the NFL as well as college football? Because they're the same sport, but they're radically different in terms of the you know the audience and the razzmatazz and the appeal and the, and the sheer size and scale. I think you know it, it's obviously it's fantastic to see games come to Ireland for college football and, and seeing Nebraska and Northwestern coming in August 2022 is, I guess, that start for college football Ireland to see where that can go down. And you're mentioning there a five year stretch. I think that's fantastic, and, and I think in time. Dublin will hopefully, you know, become the capital of college football outside of outside of the US and with tourism links with fans. I think that will work, I think that will work very well. I don't know because I'm not obviously directly involved with the NFL or the National Football League if there will be a game at some point in the future, maybe in the next five to ten years. But looking at what happened in the NFL recently, where they're now given more international marketing rights to teams over the next 12 to 24 months, allowing teams to maybe develop a presence in a certain country anywhere outside of the US. For example, there is one team that I know of at the minute that is interested in having its own marketing within Germany. So there's no reason why a team, for example, like the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Rooney family, you know, maybe down the line, if it even was 5, 10, 15 years, maybe they wanted to have a marketing campaign here where maybe they play a preseason game or play an extra game because as of next season and as of this season coming, each team must play an extra game. And as of next year, each team in the NFL must play abroad at least once every eight years. So I think, honestly, I think the ceiling's a limit and I, I think it's just going to be fantastic to see. I do think we're a little bit off in terms of a game in Dublin per se, um, but I do think in the next 10 to 15 years, it's a reality. At the end of the day, there was games in Dublin before. There's been a game in 1997. And I think once that market potentially in London has been maximised, maybe they will look at London. But I think at the moment, Germany is the 
is the main priority. But for us, we just want to keep growing it here. I've been to a number of the games in, in London, including um, seeing the Patriots against the Buccaneers, as happens uh, a number of years ago. I remember flying out there to see the New York Jets against the Miami Dolphins on the day when Ireland were playing Italy in a World Cup match uh, in the Olympic Stadium on the same day. And the morning uh, rush around Dublin Airport that day was uh, was astonishing. Uh, with an equal number of NFL fans travelling out as there were <laughs> rugby fans, I'd, I'd have to say. Um, you had Tom Rooney, um, nephew of, of legendary Dan Rooney, on, on the show uh, a couple of weeks back as well. Great listen. Um, tell us a little bit about the NFL show, what you've, you've created in order to help spread the gospel. The Irish NFL show actually started last year during COVID with myself, I'm in Tyrone, and then a few lads that are in Dublin. And it originally started out as a, I guess, like a Zoom chat where it turned into it turned into something that we never really imagined, even by that Christmas last year, where we were getting guests on every week. We went from having maybe a chat on the Sunday, but certain games to bring it on guys like Jim Kelly. It's been great to have guys like Neil Reynolds, who's I guess the main man in the UK for Sky Sports as well. And um, we just wanted to try and bring a show where I guess it wasn't a very London centric view, which isn't a bad thing, but more of a local view as well, because, you know, we do go on differently. It doesn't matter if you're like, for example, in Toronto or in Kerry, like, you know, we do go on differently than maybe somebody in Manchester or London in terms of our NFL knowledge and I guess crack as well. And it just took off Rob, to be honest with you. And then we started recording episodes in Dublin we'd done a four and a half hour special for the Super Bowl and just to get guys like you know we, we had lads like Dean Rock come on Tommy Bill come on and just something that you might not see every day I guess on like UK TV before Super Bowl and it just it just took off and I guess people really bought in from the start and it, they, they, they really enjoyed listening to it but also interacting as well and I think that's that's the main thing for us getting a guy like Tom Rooney on was was unbelievable. Obviously, he's got roots to Nuri. His family's got roots to Nuri. But to even speak with him in Dublin, especially after the year that we've all had, the fact that he flew over and had some time in Ireland, was it, it honestly was an honour. And I just can't wait to see what more we can do with that because the Steelers organisation are so proud of their links to Ireland. And, and they can't wait to see what they can do in future as well. It is, it, it, it's going to be an exciting year for you, obviously. Um, this time of the year, my uh, my podcast listening time has to expand to fit in the multiple shows that, uh, that I listen to, including uh, your own, including that uh, Sky and, and Bill Reynolds, and especially the daddy of them all, the around the NFL uh, with the boys there who uh, you know who, who absolutely light up the sport. And then you move into the red zone on Sunday. All of the excitement of uh, of that. When did you become? Uh, a fan and in, in when did when did the bug really sort of bite with you for me i went to college or i went to university in belfast and it was those late nights on i guess going to belfast on the sunday night with your mum had your whole bag packed and you sort of sat down and went right i'm gonna watch the nfl for me that's when the bug really started and i'd been working in different i guess <sighs> roles with different teams for example like you know fan groups over the last four five six years and it just clicked at one point going you know there is like you know while there are a lot of fans here and they all podcasts there wasn't something that what we you know what we done I guess was new and for us like everybody in our group has been doing a podcast for four or five years as well so that's what I got I I, I got into it whenever I was in university and I've, I've been hooked to be honest with you I'm watching it was a Thursday night game, Rob, week 16 in December. And if people aren't sure what that means, it's basically if it's like a game between 17th and 18th of the Premier League, I'll get up at one o'clock in the morning and watch it. And there are, and you know, you know yourself, Rob, there's so many people here that will do that. And yeah, the bug has been around for a long time. And hopefully, hopefully, I think that's always the one point, the late nights. Hopefully I'll be able to handle it this year. Yeah, once you get into uh, once you get into the the, uh, the playoffs, the postseason, uh, Twitter on a Sunday night and on a Saturday night, every now and again as well, just uh, just begins to light up. It was a great season last year. Um, TV twelve, I actually have a signed jersey that uh, that, that Tom signed from, uh, from one of the times that they were over in London, um, and 
I spent time living in Boston, so I became a Red Sox and Bruins and Celtics and especially Patriots fan uh, during that time. So uh, as a Dublin GAA fan, I'm kind of used to winning. And again, it doesn't quite go as it should be. That was the case with the Patriots last year. How do you think they're going to go this year? The Patriots is an interesting possibility this year. you got a guy, quarterback Cam Newton, was literally one game away from winning it all five, six years ago against my team, Denver Broncos. Went to New England, almost reinvigorated his career. I think it's going to be an interesting year in New England because they brought a guy in from college, Mac Jones. So if people aren't familiar with the NFL, you bring players in from colleges, from universities, and they come in and, I guess, learn the trade. And in the preseason, which a lot of the time preseason isn't taken that seriously, unlike, I guess, for soccer teams or for football teams, it is taken a wee bit more seriously in terms of fitness. But Mac Jones has played, has, has played great. So I... I have to be honest with you, Rob, I, I think the Patriots could could definitely make a playoff appearance this year. I don't think they'll miss the playoffs this year. I think last year was that sort of, I guess, adjustment in the life of Tom Brady. A guy with Calvin and Court Links as well. As well. So uh, I think they'll make the playoffs. I don't think they'll win the Super Bowl, but I think based upon the talent that they have, I, I think a guy like Mac Jones will come in maybe week three, week four, and, and lead the team to maybe a wild card berth this year. Yeah, it comes out of the same college as, uh, as as Tom Brady did as well, albeit I'm sure that was only an incidental when Bill Belichick was picking him out in the draft. <laughs> the 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 Irish NFL show itself. Tell us a little bit about the about the structure, about what you've got coming up now over the next week as we uh, as we prepare for the season, and what's the regular schedule throughout the uh, throughout the next nineteen weeks of the regular season, and then another you know three four into the Super Bowl. I'll start with the regular schedule first off. Usually we have a show on a Sunday, uh, which looks at all the games beforehand. Usually it goes out around 12 o'clock, 7 o'clock Eastern, so we get a wide range of people watching that there. We always go live on a Monday night, recapping the weekend, because there's always a game late on Monday night as well, which is a great crack for people sitting up late. And we always go live on a Thursday night. So that's usually our main schedule, Sunday, Monday, Thursday. And we try to go live two out of three of those. And um, next week, we've got a, I mean, this is the point where it's growing now. We've got a season kickoff week where we've got Steve White from NFL Network coming on on the Sunday night. We've got Neil Reynolds from Sky Sports coming on Tuesday night. Now he's going to preview all that Sky Sports uh, have to offer because they, they have their own channel now in the UK and Ireland for the NFL. And then we're also going to have a season preview that's recorded from Dublin on the Wednesday night. And the NFL kickoff is this day week, uh, Thursday the 9th, Friday the 10th, early morning. And we have a kickoff show at around half 10, 11 o'clock for that there. But for us, we're, we're, we're really proud and please God this works out, but we're, we're very proud to have our week one show on the Sunday from the Aviva Stadium and just to, to try and emulate some of the things that have went on there before, never mind in sport, but also in broadcasting is, it's an honour to be honest with you and to, to the people that have made that happen, it, it's, it really does mean a lot to us. And we plan again to, you know, to, to obviously go out the day after that on the Monday night as well. But for us this year, Rob, it, it is more about that exposure and hopefully linking up with different Irish companies, whether it's in broadcasting or in terms of commercialising, just to try and get that game out. Because we find whenever we go live, we're getting in people, it doesn't matter, you know, male or female, that are watching us for the first time going, I didn't know these lads existed. And that's where we find, you know, it, it, it's really a hard graft, that hard engagement to try and get people on because once they come on, they usually stay with us. But uh, very exciting. Really depends in terms of the Super Bowl. We are planning, and just, just with COVID and stuff, we're planning to go to London for both weeks in October. We're going to have two meetups in London on the both Saturday nights and shows from London on the, sat on the Sunday mornings in the middle of October. And then I have proposed we take a little bit of a rest for a while. We've got a couple of meetups in Dublin and Belfast in September. Uh, I would love for us to get to LA for the Super Bowl in February. I think that would be amazing. But who knows where we're going to be at with COVID. I, I hope the US border opens by February next year. That will be the ultimate goal for us. The, the Super Bowl is in, is in Los Angeles in February. And it would be lovely to end the season on a high there. Um, and I guess see what happens. And um, just, I guess for us, the sky is the limit. That would be something special, all right. Well, if you need a special guest star uh, for the uh, for the Super Bowl, you know where to find me. I will be absolutely there. I'll make the tea. I'll hold the camera. I'll do whatever you want. Um, the we're we're about sport and business, and obviously the sport is something which is a real passion. How are you? How are you funding 
the, the, the show and how are you funding the, the time and the energy and the commitment that you and, you know, Colm and the other guys are actually putting into it because, you know, passion can only get you so far. Absolutely. The first four or five months was, it was mainly done, you know, through passion, through our own, through our own pockets in that sense. A lot of, uh, a lot, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you, it was, it was a lot of hours in the evening trying to, I guess, build it up and not just on a social level, but also in the output of, of the production. I, I'm the guy that would, you know, edit and put all the shows out, whether it's live or pre-recorded. When we got to around the Super Bowl and, and after the Super Bowl, we find that we started to get our own sponsors on board whenever our engagement went up and our followers went up and just working with local Irish companies as well. It's, 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 it's been great, but we've been quite fortunate now over the last six or seven months that, we, that we've been able to operate um, and pretty much cover our quite low cost to an extent. Uh, you know, talking there a minute ago, but you know, going to the Super Bowl and stuff like that there, I guess the main aim for us this year is to, is to continue to improve. And I guess in a perfect world, we would love to be able to, to find a way of distributing their content somewhere and just to try and get to us to, that, to I guess, that next level. But thankfully, you know, we, 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 we have went, Rob, from a situation where it was completely self-funded to where we have had a few sponsors come on and we've got one now uh, being announced next week. It's um, a sports batting company that's going to go, that, that's going to come on for a couple of years. So we're very fortunate. It allows us to also, I guess, have a hobby outside of our own careers, but it's something that I guess for us is working out a lot. And it's, it's definitely something that we, that we, that we enjoy, but it is hard work at the same time. Yeah, podcasting is definitely the future. It's, um, you know, I think anybody who has, who has got a passion, has got an interest in a niche, um, you know, we've found it as well. We're, we're launching a, a, a couple of new series um, of podcasts over the, over the coming months. And it's just, it's, it's exactly where people want to get their information from. It's that detail level of knowledge, which you undoubtedly have. So the season kicks off. Thursday the 9th, Tampa Bay Buccaneers led by Tom Brady, reigning Super Bowl champions against the team which continually calls itself America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. They've been a little bit disappointing of late, but who knows, this could be their year. I'm guessing from what you say, well, you said yourself that you didn't think the Patriots were going to do. So if by some fluke you're wrong on that, I'm guessing that you're probably not going to put up your own Denver Broncos. Who do you think will be the Super Bowl champions in 22? Well, for... For anybody watching this that doesn't understand how it works, if you are the worst team in the league, you pick first in the draft the next year. I don't know where my team's going to be picking, but it could be quite close to that. Uh, you're talking there about the Dallas Cowboys. I was four years old, Rob, when they last won the Super Bowl. So it's been a while. I don't think they'll win it this year. I think it's very hard to look past Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think, I think they'll be up there. But I do think Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs will probably be the team from the AFC on the one side that comes out going to the Super Bowl. And on the other side, um, if it's not Tom Brady in the box, I think I'm going to get slammed for saying this in six months, but Jar Goff and the LA Rams, I think they could be, you know, we've we seen Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl in their home stadium. First time it ever happened last year, I think. I think it could be repeated this year. Jar Goff is going to a team in the LA Rams with a coach in his mid-30s and their offense is now going to be finely tuned. I think, I think the Chiefs will beat the Rams in the Super Bowl. That, okay. That's my and, guess. And a quick one: one of the like the beauty of the, the draft and the beauty of you know the best players coming out of college and going into it, it often takes a couple of years for them to actually find their feet. But Patrick Mahomes is twenty five years old. They, you know you've got you know Curtis um, uh, or Baker uh, Mayfield, Baker Mayfield, yeah. Cleveland. You know, really good young players that have come through. Trevor Lawrence seems to have been setting the college world alight and in pre-season you mentioned the fact that it's not the most serious times but he has been absolutely ripping it up is there any hope that Jacksonville could become a, a serious contender it's very interesting for me because if it was me in charge of that team like he, he's obviously going to start from the first play of the first game this is a guy that's been described as a generational talent so you know I wouldn't go as far as saying like Messi or Ronaldo in soccer terms uh, but I think it might take time for it to be embedded in that team. Jacksonville have been through a number of years of losses. They actually got they 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 got to I guess a game before the Super Bowl against your team, Rob, a couple you know two or three years ago. But they haven't really been up there since. I, I think Trevor Lawrence could work out in Jacksonville if it works out to that maximum. It, it's going to be a 
a generational pick, a guy that'll be there for 10 or 15 years. But I think it'll take time to embed. I think, you know, fans need to be patient there. They've got another guy, uh, Travis Etienne, has come in, but, you know, he's he's been down injured for the season. So, you know, this, this is the thing as well in the NFL. You've got 53 man rosters, 53 man teams. And by the start of week one, when you're zero and zero, you could be sitting with four or five guys out injured. So, who knows what's going to happen? But look, it's it's definitely a, a promising future ahead for them. They've worked hard to get them last year, getting the very first pick in the draft, being that bad last season. But I guess for us, he's coming to London with the Jaguars against the Dolphins. So it's going to be great to see you next month. Yeah, that's a game which three or four years ago would have been uh, would have been garbage time, as they uh, as they sometimes refer to it in America. But now with uh, you know with with Tui in um, in Miami looking better last year all of a sudden that AFC East which the Patriots have totally bossed for a long time in the same way as Dublin have in, in, in Leinster football all of a sudden you had Miami you had Buffalo you had well maybe not quite the New York Jets but you had a little bit of competition in there as well so I think that's going to be interesting look it's been great to talk to you um, really looking forward to seeing what your output is uh, over the course of the uh, of the week ahead Looking forward to catching up with you during the season as well. And remember, I'm here whenever you need somebody to carry the bags on that flight to L.A. If you're an NFL fan at all, the Irish NFL show on all where you find your podcast and see it on your on your video channels uh, is well worth tuning in for. So for the moment, anyway, Michael McQuaid, co-founder of the Irish NFL show. Thanks very much for your time. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.